I don't think we have any private prisons in the state. Yeah, I, I do have one uh, question. I, I would come at this from the approach of the Stanford Prison Experiments or the Milgram Obedience to Authority Experiments or the Nuremberg Trials, but I'll start with, uh, <laughs> instead of going from the moral side of things, I'd like to go to the legal side of things, which which put these people in, pridge, in prison. And is it th there are certain legal standards that have to be met for a case to be adjudicated in court. Uh, justicability, there also has to be standing to claim corpus delicti, a valid cause of action. Now, when it comes to victimless crimes, and I'm very uh, appreciative that I do have a judge and a prosecutor here because I've, I've pro per litigated this in court and effectively uh, exercised some damage control and the, uh, and the legal attack that ensues a victimless crime. But a lot of, the, a lot of these legal standards are not met in court, uh, such as standing, which requires actual damage or the violation of legal right, uh, similar to a valid cause of action or uh, uh, corpus delecti, which uh, uh, comprises of loss, injury, or harm. Uh, absent these legal uh, standards, uh, you know, how can we explain so many people in prison? Uh, you know, th th these guys are being held in there for not hurting anybody, yet uh, these legal standards seem to fail to protect them, uh, which is uh, quite ironic because we also freed other nations uh, based on this on this moral standard that it's not okay to to just uh, criminalize. Sure, sure. So I just like the panels. Sure. Was that a yes or no? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not sure that I understood your question, but I think that we, if it was that we create laws that we perceive will protect society in some way, whether they're good or not good, and that they're standing within the society for its, of itself, and in the Constitution of the United States and the state of Missouri and any other states that, that have set up these court systems, and that would be the best answer that I could give to you. What did you have anything to add? I do. It's going to be another one of these things where I go on a sidetrack, though. So he's talking about this being a victimless crime. Um, and I'd like to talk about the police aspect of that for a moment because it's a lot harder to arrest somebody for a victimless crime because you also have to find the crime. So I would like to just have you think about how a police officer who's solving a, a normal crime, like a burglary or rape or murder he already has the crime right so think about how his work is doubled when he has to go out and find the crime because nobody's going to report a drug transaction um so just just so you know they do we are eroding a little bit of our i mean they do from the window but but mostly there there's a lot of extra police work that goes into finding these crimes and it's a lot of extra time that they could be spending building community relations, being out there solving violent crimes. So I, I would like to raise that. 